the thing that I find most exciting about this is that it makes it possible for the first time to actually understand the incredible variation that you can get from the climate models. The climate modeling work is very complicated, but the results are typically presented in a single number, two degree increase in temperature at sea level. But if you do the animated maps, what you can watch is month by month how the temperature changes vary across, in the case of the maps we're presenting with Scientific American, sub, uh, South Asia. So in January, the temperature starts at a particular level, rises, but in different ways, in different parts of the subcontinent, and then gradually falls again. And we have these maps for 2030, for 2050, and 2080, so that you can see how as has been previously reported, temperatures increase over that period, but there is substantial variation. Same thing with precipitation. With the base maps for 2000, you can watch the monsoon come into India in June, July, and August, and then fade back out again. But what's really interesting is to watch in 2030, 2050, and 2080, how there's an actual increase in precipitation during the monsoon. So India and South Asia more generally will be getting a lot more rain, but in particular months, not spread out throughout the year. So what we're looking at here is representations of possible climate futures. We're going to show three different aspects of this, precipitation, minimum temperature, and maximum temperature. The first graph that we'll look at is this monthly precipitation. We put these together in four different images. The first one in the upper left of this figure shows that precipitation amounts month by month um, in the years around 2000. We have both elevation and temperature conveying essentially the same information. The higher the elevation in the map, the more precipitation. The more reds there are in the map, the more precipitation. The months roll through January through December, and in South Asia the monsoon is clearly evident, starting in the month of May and June and then continuing through the middle of the fall. The next three graphs in the upper right, the lower left, and the lower right convey information about the changes in precipitation from that base period in 2000. In the upper right, we have the change from 2000 to 2030. In the lower left, we have the change from 2000 to 2050. And in the lower right, we have the change from 2000 to 2080. In all of these change maps, the elevation and the, and the colors convey again the same information, the amount of additional precipitation or decline in precipitation relative to 2000. Next, let's look at temperature. We'll look at the monthly minimum temperature figures. You can also see the monthly ma maximum temperature figures as well. Again, the structure of the four graphs is the same. In the upper left, we have the temperatures around the year 2000, changing month by month. Higher elevations mean higher temperatures. Darker reds and purples mean higher temperatures as well. As you can imagine, starting in January, the temperatures are relatively low and rise as we go throughout the year till the middle of the summer in the Northern Hemisphere and then start declining again. The next three graphs, the upper right, the lower left, and the lower right convey information about changes in temperature from 2000. So the upper right is the change from 2000 to 2030. The lower left is changed from 2000 to 2050, and the lower right is changed from 2000 to 2080. Note that on average, as you get further out in time, the color of the change maps gets closer to the high end of the scale, the reds and the purples. But even in the change from 2000 to 2080, you can find some months and some locations where the changes are relatively small between 2000 and 2080. One important point to note from these graphs is that the, the climate models do not give you the same results in the future. Compare the upper right for the CNR climate model with the upper right for the MIR and notice that the temperature changes while on average are about the same, there are significant differences for particular places in South Asia. Different models give you different results for temperature and different results for precipitation.